Hi and welcome to Pocus Geek. In this video I'm going to go over how you can diagnose a shoulder dislocation by using ultrasound. This is not a video in which we're going to discuss looking at the muscles and the tendons. We're simply going to be looking at the shoulder joint itself. I will go in a subsequent video to this go over how to inject the joint to help with pain control and also assist in the reduction. But in this video we're basically going to review the binary questions of is there a shoulder dislocation present and is there a fracture of the proximal humerus. Now a lot of times we can diagnose this on a clinical exam but we're worried about finding other injuries so we do get x-rays a lot of time before we do this. Um, it is important to notice to note that older individuals are more likely to have associated fractures however young adults and younger typically do not. So when we look at the shoulder, um, we're, I like to position the patient facing away from me in a chair. They can sit on the um, bed, um, of, like the patient bed or the ED bed. And I have them face away from me, um, but I like the machine uh, to be off to their left, off to my left because I'm right-handed and I use my right hand to scan and my left hand to manage the machine. And what I want to identify is the scapular spine and I'm going to place the ultrasound probe right inferior to that over the glenerol humeral joint, the best I can palpate it or identify. And I'm going to look for an image that looks something like this. And it's important to remember that because we're um, at the back, this is going to be posterior to anterior. So here's our scapular spine and then our humeral head is right here and we can see those two come together just nice and the nice thing is is because we can do this as a dynamic study we can um, have the patient move their arm and what I like to do is I just have them bend their elbow put it against their side and rotate outwards and this is the maneuver we're doing here and so again just so we can go over that what we see right here in red is the scapular spine and then this part moving is the humeral head. Get rid of that because it kind of blocks that video. But you can see that they're right abutted up next to each other just fine. After I do that, I like to put the probe uh, over the superior posterior humerus. And this allows me to look for any fractures. And where I'm going to look is right along this line. This is our humerus coming down. Here's your humeral head, the neck, and coming uh, towards the dias the body of the, uh, the humerus and then I just drag inferior and that way I can at least evaluate the proximal third of the humerus. Then I like to move the probe over to the superior lateral portion of the humerus. Again we're going to look right here look for any cortical issues check the cortex make sure it looks fine humeral heads here we're going to track that down make sure that's one continuous line and then just drag inferior and we get this down. Once again that allows us to measure to evaluate the proximal third. Um, doing posterior and lateral should give you an idea of any fractures present and then we can start evaluating uh, for that di the dislocation and or fracture. So what I like to do and what I would recommend is because and you may not do these frequently look at their normal shoulder first always look at normal first because you may or may not be doing enough of these but this way you'll always know what their anatomy looks like so in this case we're gonna uh, this is a patient with right shoulder pain this is zoomed in a little bit but we're gonna see that this is our humeral head in blue and our scapula in red and let me go back here and you can see that again so now we have those same two objects and now we're gonna look at the right shoulder and what we see on this part is our scapula is right here and then our humeral head is way down here. Now if you notice they're not up next to each other like we've seen in the other examples and because this is posterior like we said before and this is anterior this is an anterior dislocation of the humeral head. It was posterior would come closer to us. And this white area that we see here is a hemarthrosis. 
So we're going to put those next to each other on your machine. There will be a dual function. You don't have to do this, but for the purpose of teaching, um, I do it quite frequently. You can hit dual and then update and put these two images next to each other. So what we see again is the scapula on the left and the scapula on the right. Then we're going to have our humeral heads and we can see that those are in different locations. And then finally we have that white uh, hyperechoic area between the humeral head and scapula on the right and that's our hemarthrosis. In the next video I'm going to go over how to inject or approach that. Uh, the aspiration of the hemarthrosis and how to inject the joint if you're going to do that. Well, here's our final product after we have uh, injected and um, reduced. We can see now that the scapula is in red and the humeral head is in blue and that they're right up next to each other like they should. And um, In this case I forgot to save a video of them doing a dynamic exam but you can do that right at the bedside right after the reduction. I like this because if you are doing the reduction and um, you're unsure you can check and you can have them go through that dynamic exam and see if it's back into place. So just to review uh, the technique for this you're going to image from the posterior scapula just inferior to the scapular spine. Um, additionally and you're going to do this over the glenohumeral joint and in addition you're going to image the proximal humerus in the posterior superior portion and the lateral superior uh, portion We'll talk about how to aspirate the hematoma. Um, I like to do that. That seems to aid in the uh, reduction. What I like about pocus and shoulder dislocation, uh, my perception is that it's quicker to verification of the diagnosis. I feel that I can get it reduced um, pretty quickly and that um, it is extremely useful for patients who can't tolerate the x-ray or just too much pain and they're in my ED bed and I'm trying to evaluate them uh, quickly and effectively to, to move on and be efficient in my time. If you have any questions about this exam, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or you can comment below. Uh, best of luck in putting this into practice.